Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sid, Head of Research at Fundamental Research Corp. Uh, it's so good to see so many happy faces this time. Uh, last few years were a disaster, so it's good to see markets getting better. Uh, but the problem we have today is hundreds of opportunities come to us, if not thousands. How do we select companies? How do we screen, uh, what's that, shortlist companies? and move ahead and uh, do our due diligence properly. So today I thought I'm gonna give you some short tips, a five minute process to uh, shortlist companies and then uh, invest in juniors. And after that I'm gonna talk about our top picks, few companies that have um, commenced due diligence and looks promising so far. Few uh, disclaimers, disclosures for the BCSC employees, anyone here? So. Who is fundamental? Few, a little bit, a uh, few words on them. Uh, on fundamental, uh, we are one of the largest independent research shops in the country. Uh, there are different types of research you see out there: cell site research, news letter research, issuer paid research. We we come under issuer paid research, and we think we are the least biased of all. Cell site research involves banking, and obviously the cell site investment banking guy is not going to accept a negative report from a sell side analyst. So we think it's biased. Newsletter writers tend to hold shares before writing up a story. So we think there's an obvious bias there. We cannot invest in any of the companies we cover. We cannot do banking, no back-end fees. All the fees are collected up front in cash, which allows us to be objective and do uh, unbiased research. Here's a distribution chart of Canaccord. It's the latest report from Canaccord. You can see that 83% of their investment banking clients get a uh, buy recommendation. Only 1% get sell recommendation versus ours. It's 70% buy, 30% of the reports are either neutral or negative. This is why quality audience, institutional retail come to us and subscribe to our research and follow our research. All right, so this is the five-step process that I encourage all investors that, to use at home so you can uh, shortlist companies. Number one, select a commodity that you like based on the supply and demand fundamentals. Stick to it. Don't get sold by promoters. Don't get sold by a neighbor to invest in something that you don't like. So select companies that, commodities that you like. Screen for companies in that sector. Number two, Check their enterprise value to resource. This is only for companies with resource estimate. What you want to do is find the enterprise value, which is simple, market cap plus debt minus cash. Find the resource estimate, which we normally take 100% of measured and indicated and 50% of inferred. Imagine you're looking at a gold company, enterprise value is 100 million, Resource is two million, you're looking at EV to resource of $50 an ounce. That's a good starting point to start due diligence on any company. Quick rule of thumb, if you're seeing for gold projects under 50, that's a good starting point. For silver, under $2 an ounce, good starting point. For uranium, under $3 a pound, good starting point. Copper, two to three cent, uh, cents per pound, good starting point. So start with this move on to the next sector, next point. This is something that's always overlooked by investors, which is to see the management bi uh, biography. So take your time to read what they, what they have done in the past, and more importantly, see how many shares they own. You can find that from CDAR, which is the platform which has all the publicly available information. Look for management information circular or SEDI.ca this is information on companies uh, ownership by management. That will give you a lot on whether management believes in what they are selling to you. So if they believe in it, if they hold it, then that means that they have skin in the game and it's good for you. And the third, next aspect is who else owns the shares? If you see big institutions, big names holding it, you know that they have done their due, due diligence. So you have some uh, benchmark due diligence done there already. Next one is NPV and IRR. This is very crucial to look at. This is for companies who have already done a PEA for feasibility. Look for present values after tax. A lot of companies come out and promote before tax NPVs. They may promote uh, low discount rate NPVs which look higher. 
So we think anything over 7% plus is a good benchmark. Uh, you want to look at after-tax NPV. And also, you want to look at what commodity prices did they use in their NPV estimates. Uh, these are very critical, and these are good ways how management can, for lack of better words, fool you. And the fifth catalyst or fifth point that to look for is, is the stock exciting? Uh, all of us here are interested in highly speculative junior resource companies, so obviously you want the stories to be exciting. So take a few minutes, read the past few press releases, read for management guidance and see what results are they expecting in the next coming months. That will give you an idea if there are upcoming catalysts and if the stock is exciting. So this is kind of the five step process that I encourage everyone to do uh, before they even start kind of uh, looking at a company more seriously. Here are some red flags. Uh, obviously management team with little background in the space uh, is a huge red flag for us. Management team with little ownership of shares, huge red flag. Um, companies that do not regularly publish their drilling results. Uh, non arms length transaction is another red flag. Um, another big one which is kind of overlooked is a non-independent board. The rule of thumb is you need to have at least 60% of the board to be independent. A lot of junior resources do not have that. And that kind of gives you an idea that uh, there's no one to control management team. So now moving on to our top picks, I'm going to mention five names. And after that, I'm going to mention uh, six other names that we have commenced due diligence and they look promising. So number one is Chesapeake Gold, uh, 18 million ounce deposit gold, 500 million ounce silver, 4 billion pounds of um, zinc. One of the largest undeveloped deposits that's yet to be acquired. This is a primary acquisition target, I believe, for the big players. Obviously, this is uh, a high capex. 2 billion plus project. So it makes it makes sense for bigger players to acquire this company if gold is above $1,300, $1,400 an ounce. So, but once that goes there, we think this is could be one of the best stories out there. Uh, the best part is that it's done by Randy Rifle. He's kind of a rock star in the house street market. Uh, he owns 9% of the company. He's also director of Gold Corp. He has done previous M&A with Glamis, uh, Robert Freeland. Um, Gold Corp also owns 9% of the company. Stock used to be $18 plus stock and now it's at uh, $3.70. We have a target of $13. The stock is now at $3.70. Next one is Fortune Minerals. It's a gold slash cobalt story in the Northwest Territory. Um, they've done two uh, pre-feasibility study, two feasibility studies. Excellent um, economics with negative uh, operating costs. Uh, cobalt is one of the few commodities out there that's been uh, that's we think is one has the best outlook because it's driven by both demand and supply. You have excellent demand coming from lithium and batteries, and the demand or the supply side has constraints because more than 50% of the production comes from DRC, and most of the big tech companies have s openly come out and said that they're going to stop taking in supply that's coming from the DRC. So companies like this who are in politically stable regions are going to hugely benefit. Fortune is the largest cobalt ho project holder in Canada. Third one is foreign mining. It's a copper zinc play. Uh, I put a map here to show you the structure or the location of the project. It's close to Hutt Bay. It's, it's in a, a, a region called Flynn Flon. They're developing a new camp. And this, we believe, is a prime acquisition target or something that a larger player is going to come and take a look at. Why? Because Hutt Bay operates most of the properties in the area, and two of the three mines are running out of ore in the next two to three years. So they are going to go out and start looking for new ore. Foran is the most advanced stage project in that area with already identified economics and also, as underlined here, with negative operating costs. Fantastic economics, good management team, and we think it's a good play for acquisition. Fourth one is Amerigo Resource. It's a producing company, copper molly producer in Chile. They take ore from the tailings from one of the largest, or the largest underground copper producer in the world. They take the tailings, process it, and sell it. They produced uh, 60 million pounds of copper last year. They are in the process of expanding their production by 50%. That's increasing to 90 pounds by 
90 million pounds in the next two years. So we're going to see a huge increase in uh, revenues and EPS from the company. Company is trading at 1.1 times revenue. The market is trading at 1.5 times. The last one is Dynacor Gold Mines. Uh, this is one of the largest, or if not the largest, custom pro gold processing facility in Peru. They've been operating the space for almost 20 years. Uh, like Amerigo, they are also ramping up production from 72,000 to almost 90,000 this year. Looking at the metrics, that 0.8 times revenue, the market is trading at two to three times revenue. Uh, EV to EBITDA is 7.5 times while the market is trading 50% higher. So the metrics clearly indicate they're undervalued. Plus, these metrics do not account for the potential increase in uh, production. So those are the top five picks. Now I'm going to mention six quick names that we've started due diligence on. Duran Ventures, similar to Dynacore. Uh, Dynacore operates in the south. Duran Ventures is a startup company. They're going to set up a similar facility in the north. Northern Peru, custom milling for a facility, 100 tons per day which if it's feasible, it's going to be producing $3 million in net profits. The market cap is just $3 million right now. They also have exploration stage projects in uh, Peru. Next one is Corvus Gold. It's an open pit oxide deposit in uh, Nevada. Already identified 1.8 million ounces of gold and 7 million ounces of silver. This is the point I like the most. Operating cost, look at that, just over $600. And the table here shows the how sensitive is their project's economics to the gold prices. You look at $1,000 here, it's giving positive NPV plus post-tax IRR of over 20%. That's very hard to find in these days when you're getting so good economics on gold projects at $1,000 an ounce. Another good point, management team is ex-Anglo Gold. They hold 63% of the stock. They're Average cost for share acquisition is 87 cents. The stock is at 80 cents, which things that, which means that they're going to make sure that they don't sell the project at under their cost. Next one is GMV Minerals, another gold story that we like. It's uh, it's in Arizona, open pit oxide deposit, half a million ounces of gold, and the beauty of this story is that they're trading at 15 dollars an ounce. I mentioned earlier that if you see a project. Under $40 an ounce, it's a good sign. Uh, aggressive drilling going on right now, 13 to 15 hole drill program announced. We think there's a huge room for expansion and a good story to start monitoring. The grade for this uh, stock, uh, the deposit is 0.7 grams per ton. A lot of people say it's low grade, but this chart kind of shows the other comp comparable heap leach projects in the world, and it's actually 0.7 grams per ton for a heap leach is not bad. It's actually good, uh, especially for a project that can expand its resources. Last two stories, Alexandria Minerals is uh, another gold project. They have been increasing their resources over the last seven years from half a million to now almost 2.4 million ounces. Their projects are in one of the best regions in the world. Red Lake area, Valdor, and also the Flint, Flint Flon Mining Camp, which I mentioned earlier. Again, they're trading at $17 an ounce. Another stock that looks undervalued based on resources identified so far. Next one is Global Energy Metals Corp. I talked about how bullish we are on Cobalt. This is a brand new company that's trying to acquire projects that's required for the rechargeable batteries. So mainly Cobalt, Lithium, Manganese, these are projects that are function as, they function as cathode for re rechargeable batteries. They are aggressively going out and acquiring projects. They already have one in Ontario, already have one in Australia. Uh, and the best part is that they already have signed an agreement with a Chinese firm that is a big supplier of materials to lithium uh, battery manufacturers. The last one is a uranium play. This is the only uranium play we cover. One of the biggest, one of the commodities we are very bullish on, on a long-term basis. Uh, this company, Sky Harbor, is one of the most active uranium pro pro companies that you see out there. Uh, they've been acquiring projects and also doing a lot of deals. Uh, the biggest project is close to Denison Mines, Wheeler River, Chemicals, MacArthur. 
This project has been giving out high grade results in the past few weeks and it's definitely worth noticing. And they also have signed option agreements with Ariva as in court to option out a few projects. Fantastic management team uh, like the other companies I mentioned. And uh, this is a uranium company you want to watch out for. Uh, so companies that I mentioned here, I would encourage you to go to their booths and question them and find out more information. And uh, you can also get samples of our work on our booth here, number seven. Come by, I'll be there uh, to answer any questions. Thank you.